Moab is a special pl place because of its history. And it's interesting that a lot of families are still in Iva that are descendants from some of the the original uh, families who were who were here back in the late 1800s. You have a lot of those families that are still here, and they will say, "My great great grandmother was this person, or whatever." And so you still have a lot of rich family history here, which makes Iva very special and unique. And then our our geography, uh, our region, we're surrounded by lakes. Uh, we still are in an area that's considered very rural. We have uh, lots of wooded areas, a lot of farms here. And we have people who, who come here for whatever reason, and they'll have to drive down to Iva or drive up to Iva. And one of the things they always say is we really enjoy the drive here. And you guys are very fortunate that you still have a lot of pastures and a lot of um, beautiful scenery that's not overdeveloped. And then I think the other thing that makes Iva special is we are we're just good people. The people who make up Iva are good people, whether they've been here for a long time or whether they're people who just chose to, to move here recently. Iva has uh, a, a special charm uh, about it, and it's a, it's a small, vibrant little town. And, you know, I think that a lot of people are, are redefining what small town America is, and I think Iva is a great example of that. And I think those three, three things really make Iva a, a really, really great place. Tim, tell me, what, what do you think some of the most significant or maybe the one or two most important things that happened here in Iowa this year? Well, we were awarded um, a grant through, uh, through the state back earlier in the year. I know a lot of towns were for sewer rehab work. That's, that's very important to us. And uh, we're going to be, uh, actually, we have a bid opening in just a few days um, to, to get this ball rolling. Uh, we hope to start construction early in 2024, and that's probably a six to nine month project. It's a project that a lot of people are not gonna really see, but the benefits are crucial. And so we're very fortunate to receive that grant. Dilapidated sewer lines, where you have rainwater and stormwater that infiltrates into lines. Um, we, this will be a grouting project that will uh, grout these lines and seal them up. It's not necessarily a line replacement. That's very expensive. This is repairing existing lines, and uh, it's. I think the total uh, amount of money to be spent is about two million. We're fortunate to get an earmark from the state budget, Senator Gambrell, and of course our representative, Mr. Our Jay West, uh, half a million dollars for the Dom Store. And what we're going to be doing with the Dom Store is renovating it and making it the new Ivan Museum and Visitor Center. And we've already had a few architects look at it and we've had some preliminary designs that are it's really going to be a nice nice facility and it's right in the heart of downtown which will also be taking place with the new library construction so these are major things that are going to be benefiting our, our downtown area and the opening of our new gym is just a few weeks away so you have three really nice projects that are going to be going on downtown and all of these were announced in 2023 and planned in 2023 and so uh, th that's that's major for downtown and we're very fortunate uh, to our delegation for making sure we have the money to do this the, the library was uh, funded in part by the state through through uh, through our delegation and of course the the, uh, the museum project um, these are projects that you will see happening in 2024. Will they be completed next year, you think? Or I think so. I think so. The gym will definitely be open. The library, I think, is about a 12-month project. So, you know, we, you'll see um, it finishing up probably in early 2025. But obviously, you'll see, you know, 90% of it complete by the end of 2024. The, the uh, museum renovation uh, should be about a six- to seven-month project. So, yeah. You'll see these things take place in 2024. And then, of course, the, um, the school district just expanded their school district facilities in Iva. So uh, they're, they're almost finished with that. And you know, early 2024, they'll be fully operating down there. So these were nice announcements and projects that were done in 2023 that are going to carry over into 2024. And all these projects will have a significant impact on our, our local economy. And you mentioned the school district. That's become a source of pride for this area. And I noticed in the state report card, I think Star Elementary had the highest grade of any school in the county. I think so. And the district as a whole is, I think, number four in the state. I may be wrong on that, three or four. But uh, yeah, we're very, very fortunate to have a very school, very good school district in this, um, in this area. And 
we're particularly proud because they're headquartered right here in IVA. And uh, they are a recruit, recruitment tool for people to want to live here. People want their kids to go to a good school and they're still you know, doing things to plan for future projects, uh, more athletic fields. But they also invest in the, in the arts programs and not just athletics, but they, they invest in all sorts of programs that are extracurricular, which um, are important to the life of a student as well. And you mentioned people being homegrown. You've got a superintendent who really understands the area because she came up through the schools, Kathy. That's yep. right. That's right. We're, we're very blessed to have her and her vision here in uh, District 3. And um, she, she's a tremendous asset to our community, and she really cares for not only students, but she cares for the staff and she cares for the community as a whole. She wants to see everything prosper here, which is very important. And she, she's a very good uh, partner with the town and, and really with the county as well. What about some other growth that you've witnessed this year about new houses, new businesses, parks, recreation? So we've had um, some new houses built in, in town in 2023, about 10. And uh, for 2024, probably 15 to 20 new houses will come in. Um, and that's in, in 2024. As far as new businesses go, we get calls all the time, little small shops that want to open up. Uh, we've got a little small manufacturing that's going to be moving into town early 2024. And uh, we have a new restaurant that's going to be opening up uh, soon. Uh, John's Country uh, Kitchen will be opening. And a few others have called. So we're working on trying to get those located here. One of our problems is we don't, have a, we don't really have any room as far as uh, buildings to rent. Uh, but that's great. So, um, yeah, our, the business uh, side of things is going really good for a small town, you know. Um, and I think once the the district is is fully operating their buses and all that through town, the the traffic count on 81 will go up. And I hope that's going to uh, help us in trying to recruit another fast food restaurant. How about your parks and recreation? I know you are working on some trails and some other things. Mm -hmm. We're in, we are working on a uh, complete renovation of the L.C. Evans Memorial Park at our Civic Center. Uh, we're going to be installing a new playground and basically redoing the entire park. Um, the existing playground we're going to keep, but it's going to have major repairs to it. Um, installing a new playground beside it to, to really make that a double uh, park area. And then new picnic tables. We, we already have adequate shelters there um, for folks to rent for birthday parties. We have grills out there, but the, the park itself needs to be cleaned up, some new landscaping, and um, just make sure that the equipment is safe. I think we talked before, that is not a cheap project. We have to utilize grants and, and private donations in order to make this work, but we have we are working on those now and plan to really have the playground completely updated and finished by spring. It'll have a walking trail too, right? We're There's about. a walking trail around the uh, playground for folks to walk. I think seven times around is a mile. Um, so parents will go out and walk while their kids are playing. But uh, it, it will be a nice upgrade once we're done with it. And we do have another park as well, our East Lake, East Lake Street Park, uh, where we have a picnic shelter over there as well and a nice uh, playground. It's, it's fairly new. Um, so we, we're trying to encourage people to utilize it while we're working on the other one. And the kids' sports programs and all are going well? Going great. The Iber Rec, um, they are uh, about to start their, oh, I guess they're already practicing basketball now, and that'll be in full swing in just a few weeks with their games. And then, you know, it'll be spring before you know it, and you'll have all your spring sports going on. So lots of kids are involved in Iber Rec, and, you know, kudos to the coaches and all the parents involved there. They, they really keep the kids involved, and it's a very fine-tuned organization, and we're very, very fortunate to have them. How about smaller things that somebody may have missed? Anything small happened this year and we're looking back over the year that people may have missed that happened in Iowa? Well, we, we are, as a matter of fact, today, you're doing the interview and just in just a few minutes, we're gonna be having a council meeting where we're gonna be swearing in our new chief of police. Um, our former chief has uh, gone to Honey Path and I understand he's doing a great job down there and we're proud of that, but uh, we are hiring, we are appointing our new chief of police this morning, Mr. Josh Bench, which will uh, take place here in just a few minutes. And uh, aside from that, throughout the year, we've had repair projects that people may not notice, but we've had to do a lot of work on air conditions and um, roof work, uh, all these things that we have to keep our facilities updated. And those are things that people don't see, but 
in order to provide places for people to rent or utilize or whatever, we have to make sure they're maintained. And so throughout this year, I think every air condition went out. <laughs> and so we had to do a lot of repair work on those and just to make sure our facilities are, are, are good and uh, adequate for people to rent and use. Is it fair to say y'all may have had more events this year than any time I can remember? We've had a lot of events this year. In the spring, we our spring festival and our fall festival, we've decided over the last couple of years to do two days, Friday and Saturday. So we did that in the spring and we also did that in the fall. And then we, we have um, started our Memorial Day weekend event where we um, work with the American Legion to for them to do their program and then we do fireworks, a concert, and that's really turned out to be a good event every year. So we had that this year, of course our summer night concerts. And then the fall we had our, our chili cook off, we had our Halloween on Main. Uh, we've just had our tree lighting um, this coming Thursday. We're having a carols and cider program in our parking lot and then of course our Christmas parade. Last week we had an open house or drop in here at City Hall. Um, so yeah, throughout the year we've had lots of events. We've had a couple of organizations that have done car shows um, in town that we've helped with this year. So we've had a lot of, of events where the public can be engaged. Uh, we had our local elections this year. Um, our, our mayor and council um, all went back in and so um, they're, they're geared up for another two years um, and have a have good great vision for growth and just to keep things going good here in Iva. And we appreciate the, oper the, the partnerships that we have with the various organizations who who work with us Anderson County, obviously, we have great partnerships with them, and then Duke Energy. Uh, there's several organizations that, that we work with that care about IVA, and it's great to be able to work with them and know that, um, you know, really folks are a phone call away, and we want to be that way too. Like IVA, we want to be good to partner with, um, know that we're here to help and, and do what we can, and we're just a phone call away if we can ever be of, of assistance to anybody. What about uh, what things has, has council sort of uh, identified as the primary things on your agenda for the first quarter of 2024? Well, we have some existing housing projects that we want to get off the ground as far as getting the, the, uh, the permits issued and making sure that everything is in place to get the houses uh, started. That's, that's one priority. A second priority is uh, we really want to identify a purpose of the Jackson Mill property. You know, we've talked about this several times. And to partner with the right developer, to partner with the right uh, agency that can help us get that property sold and developed. Uh, that is, and we've always had that vision, always had that, that goal in mind. But I think this year we're gonna get closer to that because we'll have traffic count numbers that'll, that'll be increased because of the, the school district and other little small businesses that are coming here. So we're in a much better position. Um, Southeast is, is developing with in industrial development. We see that. So uh, um, I that's think a big deal, though. Getting that project underway. It's a big deal, and we we know that it that it can happen, and we know that it will happen. We want it to be done right, um, but uh, you know, obviously, the owners of the mill property want it sold, and we we need to maintain the property while it's sitting there vacant, and that's very expensive. So the sooner we can get it sold in the hands of a private developer, the better. And so that is gonna be a priority. And then another priority or goal for the council and mayor this year is to make sure we're cleaning the town up. That's, that has been talked about quite a bit and the mayor and council have expressed their desire to make sure that we have good zoning and good building and codes and then um, that the police department has the right things to enforce uh, good clean homes and, and yards and all that. So we're gonna be looking into what we can do to partner with our with our residents here to help them get their properties cleaned up if they need it and to maintain that. that that's an important thing for a town. People want to live in a clean town and um, sometimes people just need help to, to get that done. They may not have the ability to carry off things and so we want to put together a program where we can help get some stuff hauled off if it needs to be hauled away and then um, help maintain good clean neighborhoods um, sidewalks cleaned off, uh, the roads um, repaired if they need to be done. These are things that need to be done. So I don't want anybody to listen to this and say, well, you haven't been doing it. These are goals that we're looking into to make sure that we can get them done and the finances are there to get it done and that we, that we establish a good plan uh, to carry it out. So that'll be something that we're going to be looking at in 2024. And I think that uh, that'll carry into 2025 too. Those things, these things take a while. 
but they're important. And that is something that the council and mayor really want to see done.